Right, today we are going to be fitting new brake pads. So mine haven't been done in a year. Uh, I don't know what condition they was in when I purchased the bike. So I'd imagine they're quite worn. So I've already loosened the caliper bolts. So we're going to take the calipers off and I'm going to clean the calipers. So on the other side, I've already got the caliper off. There's all my bits. Right, so the old pads is the old pads. Now that one, which was on the outside, looks like there's plenty of meat on it. This one, is quite worn. We put them in front of that camera. Right, now actually, I've got some of the wife's gloves, which she puts her fake tan on. So I hope these fit. tight I don't know if these are going to work over my little delicate hands oh get on oh ripped it already it ain't too bad I'll try them And one thing I watched on YouTube, Goose showed me the video uh, of a guy, a guy, a guy, a guy cleaning his calipers. And he said, when you get them off, stick them in a jug of soapy water, get a toothbrush. Right, let's move these out of the way and give them a clean. So let's have a look at all. what's in there which has obviously been baked on because the bike is 24 years old right, let's leave that to soak a bit more we also want to today is do the rubber mount. What's there? Because when I put the heated grips on and run the cable in through, I think I've clamped the tank down too tight and I'm getting a lot of vibration through this part. Oh, we've also we set the tent up yesterday. This was my old tent. So I've set that one up. The kids have been playing in it. So that's a smaller tent. So I might use that tent when we go to the Isle of Wight because it's only going to be a one night stay so I don't want to be putting the big tent up for one night so that will be perfect we also got a new kettle because when we go to Snowdonia and to Isle of Wight we have electric so I've got my electric lead so I can charge everything up and we also got this kettle, which I've packed down quite nice, and it extends. So that'll be a good little feature. It falls down quite small, so that'll fit just nice. So that'll be ideal, that will. So we can make Goose's hot water bottle. So what we'll do now, I'll clean up this 
and we'll get the pads in and we'll try it from then. So, we came across a little problem. This piston here, if you can see, that one there, that was seized. It wasn't moving, it wouldn't go forward, it wouldn't go back. I've got these pushed right back at the minute, so I'm just pumping them. Yeah, but this, this top one, there was that much crud around the edge, it wasn't moving. So we've got some movement in it now, so we can get the pads in, and we'll get this caliper back on, and then we'll try the other side. So where's our new pads? Here they are. And what we did with these, I'm a bit butchered now, I put these in, and then I wedged the screwdriver between the pads to push them apart. And that's when I found this one and these two ones were moving and this this piston wasn't but it is now I freed it up so we'll get that back together and we'll try the other side right so that's that side on that calipers on done it's now let's have a look at this one let's see what we got here If it's the same as that side, you're going to be able to get the pads off. Right, let's have a look. Is this one going to come off? I think it is. The other side wouldn't come off, so I think it was that seized piston that was stopping it. Let's have a look. They're not too bad that side actually. They're not too bad. Let's have a look. Don't drop it down the deck in. Now that side, that don't look as bad as the other side. Nice to see that was in nice and tight. Not. that down to get that out. No they're not. Hold on a minute. These are different pads to that side. Sure they are. Because that's not worn too bad. Now I would say he's put different pads in this because that side's got a groove in. The other side hasn't. Now if I hold on, let me go and get my other set of new pads, which I'd imagine they are exactly the same. Yes they are. I'm no mechanic, my father is, he's a mechanic, but I'm not that mechanically minded, but I would have thought when you do brake pads, I would have thought you would have changed them both at the same time and ideally use the same brake pad. 
I know obviously you don't need to replace the rears when you do the front, but these obviously, these are one enough one, one brake cylinder. Hmm. Just think I've been riding this bike here like this. I oh, did I probably should have done the brakes first, shouldn't I? Let's get a screw in there. Right. Let's see how these pistons move. Yep, they're all moving. So this side is a lot better than that side. Different pads, different pads. Mm. If any of you want to leave a comment, any of you obviously more experienced motorcycle mechanics out there, but it, if it was me with my limited mechanical experience if I was doing brake pads I would put the same in each side and I would do them at the same time I mean if that one's sticking I can probably understand that that one might have worn quicker than this one but I would not have done one side without the other I might be wrong on that you might be able to do that you might be able to tell me that but I would have thought if you're doing one side really you need to do the other side but then again I may be wrong and that's how I got the pistons moving I mean obviously it's bubbly Make sure it ain't bursting. Right. Well, let's pump it out a bit more again. So we can give them a clean. Okay. We need to stop these two coming out. We want to get the back to it. So push that one back in. these move a lot easier than that side. Right, that's those calipers done. Right, let's get this side fitted. Where's my wire brush? Okay. Amazing all the rubbish that collects up over the years I know the guy what had this before me this was his workhorse he used to use this for work and he told me well he brought it to me in the snow so rain hail snow whatever it was he used it for work I remember the day you brought it to me. That was um, that was snowing. That's I might put a bit of bit of footage now of it being delivered. And now we have to carry it up the front steps of the house. I'll pick you up and pick him up, Ivor, uh, so he can see. Oh my God, he's gonna kill himself. Well, how's that lad going to get back there, no, sir? You are. How's he going to get home? His wife's followed him. Oh, right. Looks nice, though. Oh, Looks no. He don't look 23 years old. No. He's looked after it, hasn't he? How long's he had it? I don't know. Money. What? Not new. No, it's not a new one. <laughs> Are you I'm in some with no oh. coat on the banana. It's not a new one. Mm. Right then, come here, Paddy McPads. Okay. Let's 
get you in. Let's get you in. You in McGregor's in. Okay. The pads are in. That part's in, whatever it's called. I'm not going to pretend I know. I don't. Ooh, my finger. And we are on. I remember doing the back caliper. That was an absolute nightmare, that was. That was rear wheel off. Actually, when I bought the bike, the rear, the rear brake was more or less seized on. Right, all we need to do now is get these torqued up. Right, let's just pump the lever. to get them pads to return pumpity pumpity pump 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 right okay let's get them talked up right back in a moment right brakes are done I'm now going to adjust the suspension because I feel it's a bit soft the suspension is so I'm going to make it a bit stiffer so front forks spring preload the front fork spring preload adjuster is located in the center of each fork top bolt and is adjusted using a suitable spanner so that's the bit there. Okay, the amount of preload is indicated by the number of grooves which are visible on the adjuster above the top surface of the bolt. To set the preload to the standard amount, turn the adjuster until the third groove from the top aligns with the top surface hexagon. One, two, three, yep, so I'm on standard setting. To reduce the preload, i.e. soften, no, we don't want to soften. To increase the preload, i.e. stiffen the ride, rotate the adjuster clockwise. So we're going to go clockwise, we're going to make it a bit stiffer. So when we go to Snowdonia, I'm going to be doing 320 miles around the corners. He says, right, so clockwise. So let's get us on. I'll tell you what we'll do, we will have, so what happens when we turn? Do we gain a line or do we lose a line? We are losing, okay. So I do find the front on this, if I brake hard, is a bit, it is a bit soft, it dips quite a bit. So I'm imagining this is what I'm sorting out. Might be completely wrong. I might now just go straight over the underbars and smosh my face in. But we will find out. Adjust the front fork rebound dampening using a flat bladed screwdriver. The rebound damping adjuster is situated in the centre of the preload adjuster. As you turn one of the adjusters fully clockwise whilst counting the clicks. Okay, that's my screwdriver. So we will go with the left side first to establish the precent. 
present setting, turn one of the adjusters fully clockwise while counting the number of clicks. Okay, here we go. So listen for the clicks and the maximum of... Oh, I appreciated before now. What? Right, I'll be back in a minute. Right, we're back. Send it set him in. Oh, goddamn ambulance police, whatever you are, come. Come flame in here. Right, so that's both of them set. So they are set on seven. Right, so we are done. We've done front brake pads. We've adjusted the suspension. We've adjusted the rear suspension. We've lubed and adjusted the chain. Just need to go out and try it now.